Now can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Better? Yeah. yeah, talk into it. Okay. Oh. Yeah, you really like, gotta like talk to it like ooh, I'm not gonna like that. American Idol stuff. Okay, so um so I had a relationship already up there with the current uh Democrats and the and the uh Republicans. And so I was very fortunate that they put me on some really good committees that would uh allow me to be effective in uh the 19th district. So I was replaced on um three very strong committees: rehab and social services, general laws education and health, and I'm also on the subcommittee of public education. We've just now been issued our commission and work groups, and I got some really amazing commissions and work groups. Uh, Jake Parr, which is a joint commission on administrative rules, joint commission on technology and science, which is Jay Cotts, and I also just now was appointed to the subgroup to hire the new executive director for Jay Cotts. Um, Volunteer Firefighters and Rescue Squad Workers Service Award Fund Board. I asked for that because Virginia Beach is volunteer. And so I really wanted to be able to help um, our volunteers in Virginia Beach. And then I also was placed on uh, Secretary of Labor Workforce, Work Group on Workforce Development Commission and the Commission to End Hunger. Can I put this thing? Yeah, this is, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can talk really, really loud. I'm, I'm more comfortable. Um, so commission to end hunger. And then um, the National Conference of State Legislatures. I was just appointed to the Education Standing Committee, which I'll be working with 13 other senators from across the United States on education issues on the federal and state level. So I'm really excited about these new commission and boards. Um, I think they're going to benefit the 19th District and the, the uh, citizens of Chesapeake and Virginia Beach. Um, let's get down to the nitty gritty. This year, there was 3,594 bills and resolutions that were put before the General Assembly. Of those 3,594, 2,280 passed the General Assembly. 405 of those bills were carried over to next year. Now, on even number of years, we can carry over bills to the following year. So we are carrying these over to, to 405 of them were carrying over to 2025. Now, next year, we cannot carry any over because you cannot carry bills over in an odd year. So we will hear, we already start off with 405 bills for next year. Um, 900, 909 of those bills of the 3,500 failed, so they didn't pass the General Assembly. The best thing about all of this was 500, uh, 153 vetoes that the governor did. And they were about 42 gun bills. He vetoed union bills, abortion bills, boys and girls sports, the minimum wage. And if it weren't for Governor Youngkin doing that, we would we would see a different Virginia. We would definitely be California. Um, he also amended about 44 Senate bills and 74 House bills. So he was really busy those 30 days after session to get us to veto session. Um, there were several bills uh, about in, invasive plants. We had an elephant bill, protecting elephants. We had a protection, yes, yes, not the Republican outfit. Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, we had bills. We had bills to protect dogs. We had bills that said you're not allowed to uh, declaw your cat, or you'd be charged with a misdemeanor. But we didn't have any bills that said protect the unborn. Just crazy. That's mm. that's their mindset. Protect animals, not not humans. Um, there were a lot of bills that they wanted to give criminals, people that are in jail for heinous crimes, crimes that murder, rape, everything, a second chance, because they deserve a second chance. There was a bill, SB 427, it was called the Second Chance Bill, pre deeds put that in, and it was if you had been served 20 to 25 years of your, of, your, uh, of your time already, you could petition to get out because you deserve a second chance. And we're like, well, wow, what about the victims? Well, they're dead. So how did they get a second chance? So we're looking at these. The, the Democrats were all about reducing criminals time in jail, putting them back on the street, putting those people back on the street. Of course, it ended in a 21-19 vote. But the governor took care of it. Um, there was a bill, SB 231, illegal children in the U.S. will receive free health care. You got to be illegal to get free health care in the U.S. It passed the Senate, 2119. Thank goodness, for whatever reason, and I'm shocked, it was killed in the House, which means some Democrats voted against it. So that's that's 
That was great, but guess what? It's going to be back next year. All these bills that the governor vetoed, every bill that was that was amended, they're going to be back next year. Um, Senate Bill 278, Virginia Abortion Care and Gender Affirming Health Care Protection Act, allows for services. Um, that was carried over to next year, so it will be heard next year. Um, SB 80, decrease in probation period. Again, letting people out of jail early. Thank goodness the governor vetoed that one. Um, fentanyl, we all know fentanyl is killing people, taking people's lives. So the Democrats said, yeah, we think it's important. So we're going to pass a bill that educates our children on the dangers of fentanyl. But we're not going to pass the bill that that um, puts the person in jail for knowingly giving fentanyl to you. Because we're not going to do that because that's not fair. <laughs> but we're going to educate our kids on the dangers of fentanyl. Now, I will tell you, Bill Step did get a bill passed, thank goodness, uh, the bill that was to establish a fentanyl and heroin task force. So that was passed, and Bill was pointed to that task force. So, again, let's study it. We already know it's dangerous, but they want us to study it some more. That to let, you know, keep studying fentanyl is dangerous. Um, so at least we we did have that come out of the General Assembly this year. Um, I cheap co patron a transcranial magnetic stimulation bill. Now, what this is, Senator Cosgrove carried that last year. And I there's a clinic out in Virginia Beach, and I went and toured this clinic. And it helps for with PTSD. It helps uh, so veterans, uh, law enforcement, uh, opioid. It helps people get off opioids. Uh, it's for if you have if you're autistic, it will help you with your autistic uh, autism. Um, and it helps with depression. It's amazing. It's very successful. So we put the bill in last year. We got a million dollars. It went through Virginia Tech, and Virginia Tech ate the money. Said, well, we'll do our own research. And that's not what it was supposed to be for. It was supposed to be to go ahead and go to this clinic in Virginia Beach and let's start seeing patients. Let's start getting our veterans served that have PTSD. Um, we put the bill back in this year. We asked for 3.2 million in the budget. Um, and of course our budget will be out tomorrow, but I was told that wasn't in the budget. So I'm not sure why we don't want to help our veterans and you know people that are uh, on opioid. Um, but we'll see. We'll keep trying next year. Um, so they basically put in bills to decrease time for criminals, but took money away from our law enforcement. In the previous bill, they took um, $28 million away from law enforcement. $18 million was recruitment, and then I think $10 million was for our resource officers. So they tell you that guns are bad, and they're killing people in school, but yet they took money away from us to put resource officers in our schools to keep our kids safe. So again, you sit there and you scratch your head. Like, what do they do? They say one thing and do the opposite. Um, the budget, uh, I can talk really now. The budget that was scrapped um, had some good things in it, but it was really a lot of tax increases. So I voted against it. Uh, majority of the uh, senators voted, the Republicans voted against the, the budget this year. But again, it was scrapped because uh, it didn't pass. So now the governor and the conferees have been working very hard the last couple of weeks coming up with a compromise. Uh, it's out. It will be out tomorrow. We have a conference call really early in the morning, so I have to go home after this and prepare for it. Um, I don't think it's going to be much of a change. I think there'll still be some tax increases in there, but I don't think it'll be as much as the $2.6 billion. Mm -hmm. or million, yeah, billion. So um, up there this year, there were a lot of 2119 votes in the Senate which meant that all the bad bills passed the Senate. But the good thing is all 19 of the Republicans stood strong against them on the gun bills, the union, the contraceptive bills, all those bills. I mean, we, we stood firm, but they passed. And then they went to the House and they passed. Thank goodness we had a blocker. So what I want to tell you next is elections have consequences. Oh, yeah. So guess what we got to do next year? Yeah, we're already so much. It, 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 we've got to take the house, and we've got to, you know, we, we we've got to we've got to take the house, then we've got to take the governors. See, because if he wasn't there to stop this, he wouldn't have a gun. Abortions after the baby's born, uh, boys and girls sports. Um, they would cram everything down our throats. And they're going to do that. They're mad. Just let me just tell you something. All these bills that were vetoed, they've got a list. They're coming back next year. And they're waiting. They had a, a couple constitutional amendments for uh, abortion. And they they pulled them. 
we were like, they fooled them. They're smart because with the constitutional amendment, it has to pass one year and there has to be an election. Then it has to pass the next year, the same exact, well, they're not sure where we'll be. We'll probably be in the same position. So they're going to hold off, put it in this next year. And then when they, they're going to hedge their bets that they're going to have a, a Democrat governor and it'll get passed. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I tell people um, we were very fortunate to have a Republican governor, um, not having a Republican Senate and a Republican House was a little stressful for us because we, we saw a lot of stuff that was, uh, we just know we're going to keep coming back. They're gonna, it's going to keep coming back until it gets passed. Um, more taxes. You name it. it it's going to be a California. Um, I will say in this new budget, they were fighting to remove Reggie. Because in the old budget, budget Reggie, we were to rejoin Reggie, which is the regional greenhouse bill. So we're waiting to hear for that. Um, Eric has, I believe, been taken out. Yeah. Um, and minimum wage. They've been pushing minimum wage. Um, it was, you know, it got vetoed by the governor, but they were trying to put it in the budget um, and push tax increase. Yeah. So with, with everything that was going on up there, uh, the governor saved us on some issues. Um, and so the new budget, I've been told, um, is a little bit better. So we'll know tomorrow. Um, we have an early morning conference call. Um, but I tell people, keep calling the governor, keep calling your, your elected officials. Keep supporting Republicans. That's the only way we're going to win. We've got to support our Republican candidates. Um, we not we have to stop fighting over this. Mm -hmm. Pick a candidate. Don't have primaries. Pick one candidate. Flip a coin if you have to. But we're losing in the primaries. Right now, I'm wondering is who's going to run, Winston or Joe or Jason? Because if they both run, we're going to lose. If we have a primary in the governor's race, we're going to lose because they're going to fight it out. They're going to eat all the money. The party's going to be divided like we always are, and people are going to be, you know, upset. And some people aren't going to get on board. And this is probably the most important race, the next governor's race. So I pray that they're praying and, and hoping that they can work it out because if if they do have to if they do have to do a primary, I think it's 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 we're going to lose. The Democrats already cleared the path for Spamber. They got Stoney to run for lieutenant governor. So she is now all on her own. So she doesn't have to have a primary. She's been campaigning for eight months now. So she's got a, a, almost a year ahead of, of the of our governor running our candidate. So um, they're they're doing the right thing. They're they're saying, let's stop fighting, let's stop having primaries, let's let's stick with the candidate and and win some elections. And, and I think that's what we need to do. Um, so We'll see what happens in the next couple months. I think they're going to have to, somebody's going to have to make a decision because you, you, it usually takes about a year to run. Yes, ma'am. Oh, um, what are you guys doing about election integrity? Um, uh, somebody brought a list to Jace Mayeras mm -hmm. of a couple, like 800 people that are illegal aliens that voted. Mm -hmm. And in the state of Virginia, and that's just like a small what they found absolutely a list of names that absolutely. And also, we have hundreds of people that voted in Virginia Beach that are over 114, and there's nobody in Virginia, and that's just Virginia. Right, Beach. I heard we were talking about that today. And so, um, what are we going to do about election integrity? Well, we want election integrity. But guess who doesn't? So they have to control the Senate and they have to control the House. So Jason, I'm hoping on his end can do something um, because it's we're not doing we're not the ones cheating. We're not the ones voting twice or not or you know stealing votes and doing that. So honestly, it, it's going to take uh, the General Assembly to pass it. Is there some kind of campaign that you could do in the state of Virginia warning illegal aliens that if they vote that it's illegal and they will be indicted? Yeah, well, our Commonwealth attorneys need to need to uh, enforce that. Um, our, definitely, it starts at the top, so yep. Jason needs to start enforcing it, yep. then our Commonwealth attorneys. But I can tell you, it's not going to be a law, so... Commonwealth attorneys probably in Portsmouth and Petersburg and Norfolk are not going to enforce it. Maybe Virginia Beach and Chesapeake will. Um, none of them in Northern Virginia will. 
So it's going to be one of those, unless it becomes law, you know, um, and I would like to think uh, we should all probably write Jason and say, hey, Jason, what are you, what can you do on your level? How can you stop this before the November election? Um, because um, I think it's only going to get worse yeah. because of this yeah. November election. So I do think, and I tell people, all the time, you know, when they, we did the superior vote, I, I like to vote in person. I just don't trust the mail, I don't trust anything, but you get an absentee ballot hold on to it and then still go vote in person and get their absentee ballot. So if you request an absentee ballot, then your vote is secure because if somebody came in and said, hi, I'm Christy Craig. And they're like, oh, well, we have that you have an absentee ballot. You have to bring that in to vote. So if you don't have that, you're not getting, you're not going to vote. So to me, that is, a, that's probably the best way because most Republicans like to go in person. So they won't let us, they won't let them provisional vote. Uh, if you don't, from what I was told, if you don't, but if you provisional vote, you still, it's not counted until you bring back right. your, your paper. So you still have to prove it just like with your license. If you go there and you don't have an ID, they'll provision your vote. You have 72 hours, I believe, to come back and show your ID or the ballot's not cast. So you still have to bring it back. But I'd say go grab your ballot and then walk in. I just voted early just the other day. Um, but bring your ballot, if you did, bring your ballot in and exchange it for a real ballot. That way, nobody can can do you know take your vote away from you. Um, but that's still we shouldn't have to do that in Virginia. We should have to do that anywhere. We it should be a sacred sacred um, thing, and it's not. And but I think it's going to be uh, a lot uh, a lot of that happening um, with all the illegal aliens coming. They're getting you know the Democrats for the longest time, and and when we were in the uh, House and the Senate, we were in the majority. They would all come up because they wanted a driver's license. And then, you know, we're like, no, 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 because people look at that as a legal document. You know, if you show a driver's license, people just assume. And so then a couple of years ago, we said, OK, well, let's make them orange or yellow, something where it shows that, you know, it's not a normal license. But I think right now that the Democrats pass this, I think there's just like a little marking on it. You wouldn't know it if you didn't see it. But people, you know, they're getting they're getting driver's license. Um, I know some places they didn't even show a driver's license to vote. Yes. Right. Yes. Somebody over here had their hand raised. Nope. Yes. I was I was really leaning towards uh, Winston running for governor. Jason staying where he is for another four years because he's doing a great job. But now with the yes, others right. coming out of the woodwork, Stoney and Aaron Rouse and them, all these others coming up for vice. I mean, for lieutenant governor. I think my mind has now changed to put Jason. To run for governor, keep Winston or ask Winston to stay where she is for a lieutenant governor because I think she can beat those challengers. She got the experience and everything else. Because if we lose the Senate, I mean, if we lose her, that lieutenant governor seat and that compelling vote for the ties, that's going to be devastating. So I don't know uh, what she's going to do. I don't know what Jason's going to do, but uh, somehow we need to give our inputs to. We do, because I'm going to see her Monday because she caucuses with us. All right. Um, and let me tell you what they did to her this year. So they're, they're sneaky. So uh, they they purposely made a 2020 vote. So it was either Cree Needs or Evan would vote with us on a bill that was should have gone 2119. So then they would allow her to, to make the tie-breaking vote. And then they would say, have him vote on the prevailing side by which we failed to pass and take a re-vote. What they did was they got her on record on some key issues so they could use it against her. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was so scripted. They're smart, but you know, we when we were in, in in charge, we did the same thing. But but they they put her on uh, about four or five um, key issue votes, so she would have to vote. And so then, if if she does run for governor, they'll use that you know against her in the in the campaign. My second was yes. the electronic skill games. Mm -hmm. that's coming up on the twenty third, right? It's on the skill games, uh -huh. they're going to be addressing it on the uh, excuse me the thirteenth. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. How is it looking right now? Do you have any idea? I mean, what you, Youngkin needs to step back. We're talking about close to 200 millions of dollars. More than that. Yeah. Coming into the state coffers. And it would just eliminate everything in Virginia Beach if, if he did that, uh, that the, the mileage roll and everything else. It's insane. He's making a big, big mistake. We'll do it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, I know where you're standing, the step and others. So. Yeah. 
I'm so I'm I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you right now I will override the government veto on that just yeah. so you know and he knows because I've talked to him about that. Okay. <laughs> so I, I don't very he'll, he'll I texted him today about it and he said I always like to have direct dialogue with you, Chrissy. I mean I'm very direct. I don't sugarcoat anything. I don't I, I don't wobble and flip flop. I stand strong and and I'm respectful when I talk to him. But this is where I stand on this yeah. issue and I support small businesses That'd and I support it. this issue. So. So is it something that he traded for something that he wanted? Well, he didn't get monumental. Uh, um, I, yeah, probably maybe a tax. You know, that you know, you had two hundred million uh, for the digital taxes, or billion and six, uh, six um, for uh, the um, digital and something else. I mean, it's been so long. We've been go. I've been going with not pad cops all day today, so numbers are all in my head. I can tell you. Um, let me see if I wrote it down. It was six two point six. I know 200 was the digital taxes. Um, it's probably something to negotiate with Lucas. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is. I had one of, I have a notebook and it's it's very detailed. I had all my notes written down and now the notebook has disappeared. So I had to retype stuff today. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then yes. Um, the, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong on this on these the skill games is that I thought he was going by a procedure that they had written in the original skill games. In the past, that's where the 35 mile 35, 35 mile rule came from <clears throat> was something that was written before in some of the other legislation. Well, where, where did he come up with that? We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> that wasn't in the bill that passed. Senate Bill 212 passed without the 35 mile radius, without the 2,500 feet, without the 35 percent taxes. Well, 35 miles came from the horse racing. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah. Okay. Right. But it wasn't in the skill game. They did the horse racing. Could do that. But here's the thing: when they originally did it, mm -hmm. Lucas, which is famous of any money back in her pocket, she'll vote whatever money comes in her pocket. So she was in, she was all for the casino, and then against the skill games, if I remember. Then now, once the casino's there, now she's for the skill games. I'm not sure. I know she's always supportive of the skill games, uh, but the casino was her baby. She'd been <clears> pushing <throat> for casino for 10 years. She, was, she wasn't going to see that through as her dying wish. But and now, if the skill games come back, that could to take money from the casino. I don't no, think so. No, no, no. No. The people that go into a casino are not going into mini mart. Yeah. <laughs> to buy a, a beer and a pack of cigarettes. They're just, it's just not. Look, I tell people all the time, drive down the road and you see a Ford dealership, and you see a Hyundai dealership, and you see a Nissan dealership, and you see a BMW dealership, boom, 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 boom. They're all selling cars. Yep. It's not going to hurt the casinos. No. There's only five casinos, going to be five casinos right now, you know, in Virginia, because they, they oust the one in Richmond. And so um, the 2,500 feet is crazy. Most people go half a mile, you know mile so i googled what is 2500 feet it's 0 0.473 tenths of a mile <laughs> so i know why he did that because there's a there's a church five tenths or a half a mile from the casino and rivers casino so he had to make that under that that mark um i did not support any of those amendments in fact they died in the senate with a six to 34 votes so i mean six people supported the governor's amendments 34 of us did not no. yes ma'am Okay, so two years ago, uh, you guys passed the military retirement benefit, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. Right. Mm -hmm. Just this past tax season, the uh, tax department of Virginia came out with guidance, said that TSP distributions are not included. So military has phased out pensions. Anybody who enters the military right now doesn't enter the traditional old pension section. Okay. It's all TSP. In fact, beginning 2001, TSP was available to the military. So you had people spent 20 years in the military, probably all going to be the TSP coming out now, getting a TSP distribution, they don't qualify. Okay. Well, that's something that we would need to look at to maybe amend the bill. So if you would like to get me some information, Senator Craig at Senate.VirginiaSpeltout.gov, I would love to have that and look at that. Because I, I serve on the Military Veterans Caucus as well, up in, up in the uh, General Assembly. Can you uh, talk about the, um, I heard that there was uh, changes to the charter of Virginia Beach. Uh, so, about that? absolutely. So that bill um, was, I believe, SB 189, if 
if I'm right, if I'm correct, I think Ralph's carried that. Um, so it came, it went through uh, general laws. I mean, um, through local government. So none of us saw, sat on local governments. It went, got through local governments, 15 to zero. Um, and so what happened was it ended up passing the Senate 40 to nothing because when it passes uh, unanimously in a committee, then what they do is they fast, they fast track it, put it in a block. So that's what, so that's how we had it in a block. It was on June 18th. And so it was the first week of session year and they fast tracked it to get it through. But then we were all, wait a minute, we want to, we want to vote against this. They said, well, there's a lawsuit. So in the past, it has always been that there's pending lawsuits. Legislation will not go forward. That's, that's been right. longstanding. Well now, and so the governor tried to, he did amend the bill and asked that it would be reenacted in the 2025 session. Of course, the Democrats voted that down. So it's now the original bill, and it's out there. What is the change? Sir, it, the change did not get passed. So it's the original bill that Ralph carried that said it has to happen. The change the governor put in, it had to go back through the General Assembly and be reenacted, voted again on in 2025, and they voted against that. See, on an amendment, they can either not hear it or vote it, and it's just a 50 plus one. And a veto to override a governor's veto, you have to have two thirds vote. So, so the, uh, the bill that's in effect now changes the charter of Virginia Beach in a certain way. Yes, let me see if I have it. In, this is my book. Let me see if I can get it here. Hold on. And if not, I can put it up on my phone and tell you everything about it. Let's see. What's the bill? SB, I believe, 180. Now, here it is. Uh, six, page six. Okay, here we got it. So, uh, on, um, this is our calendar for uh, the reconvening session, um, April 17th. So on page six of this, Senate Bill 189, it passed the Senate 40 to nothing again because it was block voted. Um, the governor recommended after line 70 and roll insert that the provisions of this act shall not become effective unless reenacted by the 2025 session of the Virginia General Assembly, which means we had to hear the bill again. That, that died 18 to 21, which meant Republicans all voted against that. So we voted against it. I mean, we voted for the governor, excuse me, for the governor, to put it back in until 2025. The Democrats killed it. So that bill, uh, unless something happens in the budget, uh, is going to pass. What's well, it's it, it, it's whatever. So whatever Rouse put in for the districts, Rouse put in the bill for the uh, set up. Uh, Act to amend and reenact 301 as amended, 3011, 3012, 30122, as amended Charter 147 of the Acts of the Assembly of 1962, which provided a charter for the city of Virginia Beach and to repeal 3.02.3 of Chapters 127 and 762 of the Acts of the Assembly of 2020, relating to the city council voting districts. So it, it's well, it, so I don't have the full bill. So I, I, I wasn't the patron of it. And so I didn't vote for the governor's. So, I mean, I didn't vote for it. You know, the governor, I voted for the governor. Um, so basically, I think Virginia Beach made the districts one through 10. And you have to live in the district. And so they were trying to we were trying to kill that. Okay. And there's lawsuits pending. I think did y'all put in one? No, uh, I know several people put in lawsuits to stop it right now. Um, and so in the past, lawsuits have always trumped any legislation going forward, but the Democrats are not doing that. And they're in charge, so they get to make their rules. So that, I believe that bill is, is going to pass. If you want, you can go to the Virginia General Assembly website, virginiageneralassembly.gov, all one word. And on the right-hand corner at the bottom, there's a little box, and you can click on, it'll, for the, if you know the bill number, so you can put SB, no, no, uh, it's SB 189, no dashes, no uh, spaces, and click on it. Or you can you know the patron, which is Rouse, you could go to the next box, click members and click Rouse, and then pull it up. And there's many versions. There's a line version, which that's what we use, the PDF version. Um, so there's several different versions of it, um, but it's very lengthy and it's all legal. Yes, ma'am. What happens if the lawsuit goes through and they find that it was? Well, then the lawsuit would trump the legislation. That's why we always, okay, so we would never go would through with, yeah, so yeah, we would, we would never go through with legislation if there's pending lawsuits because of this. Um, but I, I think so the Democrats think it's going to pass. 
I'm sorry. No. Would that be reversed then? I'm not sure. It would have oh, to be okay. done in the courts. So it's mm -hmm. the judicial branch. Um, because we've never done this. This is no there's this is not how we did stuff. We we stopped. So this, yeah, this is gonna be new. Do I trust that they wouldn't figure out a way to that you know it happened? Yes. So this could potentially go to the Supreme Court then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if if the lawsuits continue. I'm not sure if anybody I know there were several lawsuits and I don't know if people have pulled them since then. They appealed those. I know they appealed one of them. Yeah, they appealed them. Yeah. But I will tell you, Fowler did the same thing. She put in, now she no longer represents the city of Chesapeake, but she put in a bill to do that to the city of Chesapeake. Mm -hmm. So it's going to happen. They're going to they're gonna do brewers and, and things like that. They they want, they think that's easy, that they can win elections. You know, Chesapeake, we always had our local races in May. So we always had eight to one on council, nine to zero right now on, <laughs> on school board. Yeah. So now this November, guess what? We're going to lose seats in both council and school board. I mean, I pray we don't. I just, I just have a feeling it's going to happen. They've already, they've already said they won't. They're going to sue us. Uh, and yeah, that, yeah. They should be up speaking about it. Um, so, I mean, so they're on offense and we're on defense. Yeah, yeah. I will say in the Senate, because I've, I've been, I've seen both sides. So Senator Cosgrove, uh, <laughs> Senator Cosgrove served in, this, in the House for 13 years. And in the Senate, there is there is a there is a respect amongst each other. I mean, we don't we don't agree, but we are not mean and vicious and malicious on the floor. We still, you know, are very cordial to each other, very respectful. We'll say, you know, I you know, I'm gonna have to disagree with the senator from Arlington. I cannot support this because of this. And the House are like, you're an idiot, and I'm not gonna you know, support it. So I will say that there's still decorum in this in the Senate. Um which is nice because you get a lot more done. Look, there's about 20% of the of the stuff that, that divides us. So put that aside. There's 80% that we could work together to get things accomplished. And we do do a lot of that in the Senate. I will say in the Senate, we get a lot accomplished. Yes. Who's a reasonable Democrat? That um, I, my, I shouldn't say this is a video. Um, I get along with everyone because I was brought up to respect everyone, not to agree with you, but to respect you. And um, so, but the one person I have enjoyed a lot because I serve on uh, the subcommittee for public education is Van Volkenberg. And he's a, he's a Democrat up in Northern Virginia, but I put in a bill this year to monitor um, children's devices, uh, you know, the, 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 the ch that the schools provide. You know, we want to make sure we parents know what's on these devices, what they're looking at, what, are they, what YouTube's they're looking at, or what you know what. And so I put in this bill, and it was a governor's bill, and so it had a big G, and they were out to get me. They're like, "Nope, we're not getting this governor's bill, killing it." Well, Van Volkenberg came to me and says, "Hey, I like I like this bill. I like the concept. Don't like a lot of things in it. Would you mind if we carry it over for the week, and let's work with it?" It's like, "Wow, yes, I would." We carried it over. We got Google involved. We got all the stakeholders involved, superintendents, association, the school boards, everybody. Uh, and then we still wasn't ready for prime time. So we carried it over one more week and we got it right. Everybody was happy. It was a compromise bill. It was something that everybody walked away with something. And it was going to, you know, so we put it through unanimous in the in the, the, the committee, subcommittee, unanimous in the full committee, unanimous on the Senate floor. I went to the Democrats, went to subcommittee, and I was told it was a kill committee. That's why I was in the committee it was in. And they drove me. And one gentleman, Democrat, he's new, said to me, well, I'm just a little concerned. Did you ask the children what they want? <laughs> Do, did you ask the children what they that do they want their parents involved? Do they want their parents to have the opportunity to see what they're viewing on the internet? And I went, sir, this is a safety and security issue. No, we didn't ask the children. It died. Good. Went down. Passed the Senate unanimous. I had both sides, Democrats and the Senate, uh, Republicans. 100% on board because we worked. That's nothing. This was a bipartisan bill. This wasn't a, a gun bill or abortion bill or 
boys and girls sports. This was a bill that was a great bill. And we worked on it for two weeks and got everybody. Google was happy. Wow. <laughs> and they killed it in the Senate at House because um, they were worried that the children, they thought the children should have a say so. And if uh, the parents, uh, now these are the same people that, that you know, we had some bills that they said 13, you're at 13 year old enough to make decisions on the internet. No, you're not. <laughs> so it's very scary. Yeah, you got a question? No, I'm just oh, okay. no. <laughs> so it, it's um it's I, I like the fight I'm, I'm I'm a fighter so I'm not afraid to stand up um and and fight for the, the things you know the conservative values I will say Bill was my mentor Bill is step and he did a great job we were in each other's office so this is what we did we would meet every morning and go through the calendar it's a very thick calendar and we would flag things and make notes, things that we know what they mean, and we work together and helped each other. He's an amazing person. He's a great friend, a great, uh, a great senator. Uh, I respect him. Um, we work together. Uh, you know, we would kind of play devil's advocate and kind of feed off each other. And, you know, there were some things he was like, oh, I didn't think of it that way. You know, so we, we did work very well together. And um, so I think Virginia Beach was very well served um, and between the two of us. And um, today, you know, I, I always he'll remind me of things. I'll text him and say, hey, there's a we had a we had a conference called the sector of, of uh, public safety today with fentanyl, opioids and things like that. And I had texted said, hey, don't forget about the call. He's like, thank you. you know, things like that. We just we always have each other's back uh, up there. So that's that's a good thing. So, yes, ma'am. Um, talking about public safety, uh, we really marry what's going on up there on the campus mm -hmm. right now. Is there any talking in caucus as to the direction in which they want to approach that, or are they looking to the AG for any governor on trying to prevent all of this? Well, I know the governor's still going to be at the VCU graduation uh, speaking, um, even though his staff and law enforcement and everybody has, has asked him to stand down because of the dangers. Uh, I made a statement right out the gate. I don't support it. I believe peaceful protests all day long. But when you when you affect people going to school, affect graduations. I mean, these people that are graduating this year didn't didn't have a graduation four years ago. So they didn't get a high school graduation and they didn't, they're not getting to college. I have a condo in Eaton, North Carolina. I was walking down the street of Eaton, North Carolina and a lady says, oh, Christy, she lives in Eaton. She said, I want to introduce you to my daughter. She's a teacher and her kids go to um, college in Virginia. I said, oh, okay. And she actually, actually is in my district. She lives in Virginia Beach. And we talked a little bit. She says, I am so upset because we're going to pick up. We're leaving now. We're just leaving Sunday to go pick up our, our daughters at college. They're twins. Because they've canceled classes and they've canceled graduation. This was a couple weeks ago. In she lived in Virginia Beach. Oh. They went to... Um, George Mason, I think. Or anyway, so they canceled classes and they canceled the graduation. She said, "Now, now," I said, "Well, you know, what we should do. We should give parents back some money." Yeah. I mean, that's what parent you, you pay a hundred thousand dollars. You want to see your child walk across that stage and get their diploma? They missed it because of COVID, and they're missing it now. And they ended classes. Be so that to me, I don't agree with that. You want a peaceful protest? Peaceful protest when you affect. Other people's lives, then I have a problem with that. And so I don't support that. So it's happening more and more. It's, you know, start Virginia Tech, it really got aggressive. Uh, I believe there were a lot of people arrested uh, there. Um, and, I, you know, I certainly, I was involved. I don't tolerate getting in a police officer's face, disrespecting them, spitting on them, any of that. I, I think that that would draw the line. So, yes, sir. And then I'll get you. Some years ago, uh, a commission was established to address the uh, resilient uh, projects, uh, flood control mm -hmm. projects, what become of that? I'm honestly not sure. I don't sit on that committee, and it would probably be through the budget. I believe they were some talks about it. I will tell you, a woman that knows a lot is that woman right there. Um, <laughs> do you know anything about that, ma'am, Miss Vick? No. Mm -hmm. no. no. Okay. Just get reports. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so no, I don't have any of the information on that. I can get it for you if you'd like. Well, Leslie, she found the conservation yeah, yeah, well, conservation soil, Leslie. Oh, they did the funding. They stopped funding it. I'm sorry, what? This gentleman had a question. Yeah. Yeah, the resilient program to address the stormwater projects. 
a commission was established, a woman was, was in charge uh, to address the uh, projects, to coordinate and uh, fund the uh, projects. Ours is agriculture. It doesn't have anything to do with what happens with the city. I don't, we don't have any jurisdiction. Might be maybe a local issue, but yeah, because it's a, uh, it's not only just the city, it's this Hampton Roads area that the commission was uh, addressing. Are you, not in are you talking a regional commission that was set up by the state? That's what I was wondering. Yeah. It was the state that set it up? Right. Let me, I don't have anything to write with. Can somebody take a note and get, and I'll, I'll get some information. I'll put a number and get you some information. I think it was a, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just a few minutes ago, uh, someone whispered in my ears that uh, gods and refugees are on their way. Is that true? That what is one of the the refugees are in our near future? I have not heard that, but it does not does not surprise me. You have no information. No information on that. But I'm gonna ask. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bin now, so I'm gonna write it down. We can't do this other board, so thank you. Got a question? Yeah, I was just writing down those stories. Okay. Yes, ma'am. What happened with SB six sixty one for the nursing? Okay, so I carried uh, Senate Bill six sixty one. It was electronic monitoring for nursing homes. I had some uh, constituents that uh, had some issues with their their parents or loved ones in nursing homes, and they were not getting taken care of. There were bruises and things like that. So years ago, Senator Cosgrove put into this bill to allow. Um, if your loved one is in a nursing home, you could put in a camera. It was um, in your room. You'd have to pay for it all. You'd be responsible. And if you were in a room that you shared, you had to get permission with the other persons. Um, and it was when Ralph North was governor. It went through the health the health uh, commission, and it sat on Ralph's desk for two to three years. So basically what happened was it came out that the nursing homes have the final say. Well, we all know what they're going to say. <laughs> they don't want you to know what's going on in there. So I put a bill back in that says that it can only be in private rooms. You have to pay for the whole, the bill. Um, and it was, it was, I mean, I, I talked about, you know, how we allow your dog. You can take, put your dog in a doggy daycare and get videos and watch him, but you can't watch your that's mother or father, your grandmother. This is, this is crazy. And I said, during COVID, could you imagine if we would have had videos in the nursing homes that could maybe people wouldn't have died of loneliness? You could have had a, a better connection than watching them through a window. So I pleaded with them. I gave them all of these things. I think when I said the doggy daycare, it got so it was a subcommittee in the Senate, and they all were like, took a vote, did that. So, uh, so that was subcommittee. No, she went in. It was for Bolton. But what happened? Yeah. It went. So it, so in, in the Senate, we don't kill bills at subcommittee. We refer that they are passed by. In the House, they kill bills in the, in the, in the uh, subcommittee. So my bill got to go before the full committee. Well, they came up to me, Bobola and some others, and I must have got to it with the doggy, doggy daycare. And they said, Christy, we really like this bill. I know we voted against it in subcommittee, but would you be willing to carry it over and work on it in the interim with all the stakeholders, the nursing homes, all the people that were against it? And all she says, because we really like this bill, we want to see it go forward. It's like, wow, thank you. So my nursing home bill is not, it's still alive. We're going to be working on it in the interim, trying to find if we can come to a compromise. But I will tell you, the people that killed it in the subcommittee are now on my side, and it'll go through. The, sub, the same subcommittee. So is, I think is I, I, any other states? Um, I'm not sure. I think it is. Not a lot of states, but see, the nursing homes there were like, oh, the legal issue. I said, well, okay, so we put it in the, you know, in the room. You have to pay for it. And then she, you know, and then, oh, what about all this wiring? I said, this technology is, it's you know, it's it's, it's just all it's not it's wireless. You could. So they were like, oh, well, if you put it right here, and the camera accidentally is. You know, watches somebody walk by that proxy is by. I said, "Well, then we removed it, and it won't show the door." I mean, they were really they 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 all came at me, and I was you know I, I had the one gentleman that asked me to put the bill in, um, 
And so all the nursing homes, everybody was just, and they were, they, they were respectful. And I know all of them. And they told me before, hey, Chrissy, we're going to have to oppose your bill. And I said, okay, well, I'm still going to fight you. And, uh, but when we were in full committee, and so they didn't show up to full committee because they saw that the bill had died unanimous. And so, so all of a sudden they bring my bill back to life. And I'm getting texts from all the lobbyists and going, what, 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 what's going on? I said, I don't know. I said, Favola has brought my bill back up and it's passed and it's carried over now to next year. And they were about to die because they, were, they weren't prepared for this. So afterwards, they met me outside and I said, hey, I was just as shocked as you were, but I'm, I'm ready to go. So I can't wait to start meeting with you because we're going to get this passed. It's the right thing to do. And I think when I gave my plea, I mean, really, your dogs go to daycare. You can see your pups, your dogs. You get pictures of them. You can watch them on a video. But our most vulnerable people, you can't do that. And you know what? And let me just say, not only, but they, you pay a lot of money to be in these homes. Most most people, eight, six, seven, ten thousand dollars $10,000. You can't have a peace of mind. So I was somebody who brought that up. I forgot about that. So that bill's gonna, we're gonna work on it in the interim and hopefully come back. And um, I will tell you, um, they're gonna have to give a little bit. You know, compromise. We might have, I don't know how we're gonna figure it out. We will figure out hopefully a compromise. If they can be happy, we can be happy. But at the end of the day, you're gonna have a you know, find out if California's approved it. It's legal in California. Oh, it definitely will be legal in Virginia. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you for um, the commending Rabbi So Yes. We just had him. And Did you, I have his resolution. I have to get with him. I saw him at the National Day of Prayer. Uh, and so I have a resolution because I think it's 50 years now. The last one that was done for Rabbi was three at his 30th anniversary. So now it's his 50th. So I did do a resolution for the rabbi. Yeah. I've got to get it. Because we had it. We had a thing for him on Saturday. Oh, did you? I have to probably make an appointment. Go see him. He's a busy man. I tried to get him after the National Day of Prayer and he was gone. So, anyway. Anything else? Yes, sir. Uh, any discussion or actions on the proliferation of fees on our electric bill from Dominion Energy? It seems like it's endless anymore. They're, they're now going through the SEC. So, they, they are being the fees and everything have to go through the State Corporation Commission before they weren't going through the State Corporation Commission. Um, I thought you were going to talk about the personal property taxes <laughs> because I've been getting it really hard about the personal property in, in, in Virginia Beach. So, the information lady over there. I have two things. Following up on what Memphis was talking about, the electric bill. One of the things that every time that thing comes, and there is a section this big on climate change crap. I see red. No, I think I would too. I'm like, why do I have to pay for you to investigate ways to save the climate, which I don't believe is in danger anyway? Right. Okay. It's just a, a given. Why should it not be a private They're entity? Right. Yes. Let's do it. Um, that I can't say, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to look for new ways. Oh, I'm gonna be honest with you. I pay my bill online. They take it right out of my checking account. So I don't even see a bill, but I'm gonna have to get a bill so I can look at what I'm paying it's for. <laughs> I, I'm so serious. I don't. Easy. I don't even see it. I just. I just. They every month are just so gracious to take it right out of my account. Okay. Well, the other thing is with nursing. Mm -hmm. I have friends in nursing. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know. She came before. I have to go there. But um, one of the one of my friends who <laughs> has since passed, but. She um, had dementia, and um, she couldn't. She, oh, she she didn't know you were there, and she could. She would always fall out of her wheelchair, or she would fall out of bed. And I'm like, would somebody please put a strap around her so that she doesn't keep falling forward? And one time I went to see her. Her face was all black and blue. She had stitches in her forehead, and she had. And she was in horrible shape. She had fallen while somebody was feeding her. And I'm like, this is insanity. And rather than put up a, a thing on the side of her bed so she couldn't pull out, they put a mattress down. So yeah, she was pushing her fall? <laughs> um, which at that point, when she did that, she broke her back. 
Oh, now, I'm Sorry. telling you, I don't believe in restraining either because it was misused with the mentally retarded and with people with disabilities in big institutions. And I saw that happen too. But when there's an absolute, you can see what's happening. There should be some way to restrain her for her own safety. And you know it's against the law to restrain them in nursing homes. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, it, it does again, common sense people. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, they, they we always legislate because we we always when one person does something wrong, we just we, we come up with the law and punish everybody. Exactly. And here's back to them. That's what we do. I think we did that in law enforcement. When one thing went right, and rather than be a, a leader and, and, and just fix it, they punish everybody. Yes, ma'am? Okay. Um. So is there any way that you can find out if we are actually getting illegal aliens? Yeah, I wrote that down. I'm going to, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also because uh, the reason I'm concerned is because I've seen some things going ar on around close to the base and also in the past week or two, there's been a lot of like, unusual, I live close to the base, a lot of um, passenger planes going into Oceana. And I've just been a little concerned about that. And then other things I've seen around the base. Type of passenger place because sometimes I use them for military. Well, I know, I know, I do. I see them all the time. I mean, for 27 years, I've lived there. And it probably will be on a federal level, not a state level. But this is now a lot of the passenger plane. I may try to call and contact Jean King as well because it's probably on a federal level than a state. Yeah. But is Virginia Beach a sanctuary city? Did y'all? No, no. Well, I have probably have to have that question. Like the news, I'm sorry. The news pointed out tonight that you know these the illegals, and I they are illegals and not migrants. They um get nine hundred and fifty dollars for monthly expenses, and the people in Maui who got burnt out, who were citizens of the United States, got seven hundred dollars. And remember, they also wanted to give all the children free health insurance. Yeah, oh, absolutely. They also said that the reason you're not getting your health uh, care is, be is like it used to be, is because the illegal use the hospitals as their main Yeah, they don't go to doctors. Right. And we're not allowed to do that. And we're not allowed. We have to have a doctor. They use the hospital. So that's where it drives up the cost. And they get it for free in I have two thousand. What is yeah, I'm, I'm I know you're and of course I don't like illegal immigrants, but one of the reasons so many legal in the country is legal path is so hard. My mom's stuck in India for three or four years because of a green card issue. When you guys talk about legal immigrants, I understand that, but please, please talk about how this is messed up. That's nothing that the general yeah, 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 right. yeah. Right. My yeah. grandfather, yeah, yeah. yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. The federal government listens to they're supposed to listen to the state. So yeah, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I beg of you guys, when you talk yeah. about legal, I completely understand if you're legal as a legal immigrant, but please, please understand we have a big problem with legal immigration process. We do. Oh, I do. My grandfather. I know what you've got to do. I don't know how to talk about it. I'm really not going to do it. I'm telling you, the Republican committee woman is a immigration attorney. If you have questions, she has represented many people from diverse countries and she can actually help expedite that. Okay, so, that's great. Thanks, Matt, Matt, Matt thank get you. the last question. And he had, I think it was somebody yeah, back there, Matt, a yellow glass. No, um, I, this is, I don't know if you probably agree with No, the DMV has a fee that they start, you know, for the electric cars. Okay. And when was it started? 2000, I don't know, 2019, 20, something like that. Um, but what they're doing is they're, I agree 100% that electric cars should pay to use the roads because they abuse the roads, just like the gas car. Right? So a lot of people, there was a story in the newspaper the other day how people don't understand why they're paying the fee because when they pay the electricity, charge their car, they're not paying for the gas tax that goes to repair the roads. Well, there is a loophole in there 
that for vehicles, they're electric supposedly again. if you have a vehicle that's under 25 miles per gallon, you don't pay it mm -hmm. because you're already buying enough gas right. to do it. Well, I drive a, a van, has a big V8 in it. I get maybe 12 miles and 14 miles an hour. But the DMV says, I still have to pay that fee because my vehicle, because one vehicle of a three quarter ton vehicle or so, EPA doesn't classify it with gas mileage. But in their text, they actually said, we take the average of that, that vehicles of that range, take which the trucks by Nissan, and see what their mileage is and use that. Well, I wrote a letter to DMV and they came back to, no, that doesn't apply. So I've been paying, you know, not like I said, I get 12, maybe 14 miles a gallon with a big V8 and everything on the haul, it's a lot of weight, but I'm paying that EV fee every year. So I'm, as they said, it's double tax. Yeah. Okay. IEDs. So there was a question there? No, it was a statement. Okay. My EVs are taxed at a higher rate to cover that. Now my personal property tax on my electric vehicles is a higher percentage rate than. You said electric vehicles. He's got an electric vehicle. Uh, yeah. I, I, I okay. thought it was plural. I'm just making, I just wanted to you know, put that out there. Okay. Can we have a round of applause? Thank you so much. I will, I will try to get some answers to that. Now, I really, I've got to say, um, during um, Christmas, um, the Cavalier um, was doing that buy a gift card for $50 to get one free. 